Okay, we're now going to continue on. We're now going to continue with the adoption of the agenda. So um, right now the agenda has been set is on the SRA documents page and right now we're ratifying it so we can do so. Um, may I please have a mover and a seconder for the adoption of the agenda. If you'd like to be a mover or a seconder, just please put in the chat like move. OK, so moved by Hackett and seconded by Figueroa. Hackett, would you like to speak to it? No, I would not like to speak to it. Let's okay. go. OK, Figueroa. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. OK, lovely. Um, uh, let's amend some things and get her done. <laughs> OK. Um, do we have any amendments to the agenda? I have an amendment. Uh, can you please put it in the chat? Sorry. Give me leave. Perfect. Figurito? Is now exiting. Figurito? Um, I just put it in the chat. Um, I want to um, weigh sections 3.1.4.1.4.2, and 3.2.3.2 of the operating policy vice president and speaker elections. Um, those are the. Um, yeah. Can we please have a seconder? Okay, seconded by Hackett. Ficarito, would you like to speak to it? Yeah, those are just the stipulations for the individual question period um, that says only one person can be in the room and people have to leave. They can't take electronics with them. We just can't do them um, because of the current format. We can't ensure people leave the room and don't have their phones with them. Um, so that is why um, I'm moving those just to waive those just specifically this year. Okay, hack it. Uh, Sarah said it great. What Sarah said. Okay. Do we have any further discussion? All right, then we're going to move to a vote. I'm going to put the motion that's currently on the table. Moved by Figueroa, seconded by Hackett, that the SRA waive section 3.4.1, and 3.2.3.1. Point two of the operating policy, um, vice president and speaker elections due to the restrictions of COVID-19. So now for y'all, if you don't have the report meetings, I'm going to then just remind you how to vote. As you can see, it's already happening. People are messaging the chat saying if they're in favor or not. So what I want y'all to do is if you are in favor, please message the chat saying that you are in favor and we will count that. I'll give a moment for the in favors to come in. Okay. 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 Um, all opposed, if you're opposed, now's the time to do so. And I'll abstain. Um, in the future, what will happen is when we do go to vote, if the, regardless of if you're in favor, opposed, or abstain, if you can just write that down immediately, that would just make the voting process smoother. But I'm just doing it typically how we see it in typical SRA meetings for the first vote, just to make it, uh, just to make it, just to guide how votes happen. So if we're having any more straggler votes, now would be the time to vote. OK, so the motion passes. OK, do we have any further amendments to the agenda? Uh, Figueroa? Um, yeah, I would like to uh, motion to move the speaker election to item one of uh, what's it called? Oh, special business, special orders. Of the day. Okay, do we have a seconder? Okay, Johnson, Figueroa, would you just speak to it? Yeah, it's just a quick election comparatively, so it'd be nice to get out of the way so those folks can 
go study for exams, and then also the person who wins um, can stay on and watch how the meetings proceedings go. Okay, Johnson, would you like to speak to it? No, oh, sorry, what Sarah said. <laughs> okay. I'm just right now writing the motion of the day. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All right, then we'll move to a vote. Moved by Figueredo, seconded by Johnson, that we move speaker elections to the first special orders of the, oh, we, give me a second. Uh, we do have a question. Uh, so this right now is, a, um, if, if this is, a, what am I trying to say, a point of information, this would be able to override everything. So Figueredo, please go on. Yeah, just a question about how the agenda lay is currently laid out. Does that mean we're going through each election one by one, or is that the format where we're going to go through the presentation so, and then tomorrow? Yeah, pendant? of course. Let me explain it, how it goes. So typically what will happen is that, as you can see, the elections are all just all just what am I trying to say? They're just in a sec, just in sections. Um, so what will happen is that when you want to push something to the next day, you will motion. Um, what will happen is that you, you will be motioning to move the rest of the period, to suspend the rest of the period at, until, like, to put it on the table. Then when it comes to unfinished business, um, what will happen, well, what, so what would happen is that we put it in unfinished unbus business. What would happen after we go and, and like, put the motion on the table is that when we later recess to tomorrow at 10 a.m., we will be able to then continue on from where we previously left that off. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay. So now we're going to go back to the motion at hand. Um, if you voted for it, please re-vote again. And I'll put that up. Moved by Figueroa, seconded by Johnson, that we move speaker elections to the first special order of the day. Um, please put your vote in now. Just counting the votes right now. Okay. And the motion passes. Uh, do we have any further amendments to the agenda? Okay. Uh, Yes, Charlie, you have a point of information. Um, regarding the streaming of this meeting, is that um, happening now or is it happening after the meeting? Um, so currently, oh, never mind. Can you, uh, figure it out, can you please speak to it then? Yeah, so unfortunately we're having an issue with getting the audio to work out. Um, so what we're going to do is it's currently recording. We're going to upload these um at the end of this meeting online so people can watch them if they have questions before the next day. If anybody's really good with OBS and how to get audios to work on Mac, please let me know. Uh, we can stream tomorrow, but was just having issues doing the audio, so we're not currently streaming. Okay. Okay. And now we are going to then move to a vote, uh, moved by Hackett, seconded by Figueroa, that the agenda is adopted as amended. Um, if may, if you can please put your votes on the group chat, that would be wonderful.
OK. And the motion passes. So now we're going to continue with announcements of the chair. So as I said, welcome everyone to SRA 20A. This is a very interesting meeting, especially for a lot of you since it's your first time and we're doing something which is very unconventional. That can be very worrying, but don't worry, we're all in this together and we're going to work this out. So as I feel as if you, some of y'all have already gotten a feel for, we'll be doing voting and adding yourself speakers list on the on the on the chat. Um, if you have any questions um, about the uh, about motions, feel free to either message people on Slack and ask the questions. Um, in addition, if you have any questions about um, about the motion, feel free to also do a point a point of information and ask these questions. I know um, as this being your first experience with the SRA, so some of you might be nervous, but what I encourage you if you ever have a question or you have something that you think would be um, that that you want to say about a motion that is at hand, don't be afraid to go and say it. So don't be afraid to add yourself to the speakers list and ask questions. Um, I know it can be daunting and sometimes it can feel as if what you're asking might already be answered or not, but that's a part of the learning experience. And I encourage you all, if you have if you have a question, feel free to ask it. Um, um, I'm very I'm I'm open to people who are learning. I'm pretty sure that the vice presidents and people who are returning on the SRA are also so open to the discussion. You were voted in to represent your assembly and all of you are going to do an amazing job. It, um, so just feel free when you feel as if you can contribute to the discussion or you feel as if you want to say something to the discussion, regardless if you feel as if it's going to contribute or not, feel free to say it and, uh, and I'll just be guiding you this first few times. And yeah, and also, in addition, for the people who are vote who are joined the meeting but are not a part of the SRA, such as for example, if you're an AVP, if you are someone who is a part of what am I trying to say? If you're someone who's a part of who's trying to run for an election, and you can see this chat, please feel free to message the chat just saying your name and your affiliation. So basically, if you're a candidate, if you're an AVP, just so we can get your attendance. So when we put this on the agenda on the meeting minutes, we'll be able to add you on. Feel free to do that whenever or so ever. So I believe these are all the announcements of the chair, which I have. So now we're going to continue to special orders of the day. And the first special order of the day is now the election of the speaker. So that's super exciting. So right now we are going to uh, may I please have a mover and a seconder? So moved by blank, seconded by blank, that the SRA closed nominations for the vice president for the MSU speaker of 2020 and 2021. So we have moved by Mirando and then seconded by Hackett. Uh, Mirando, would you just speak to it? Got some nominations. Time to close them. Okay. Um, do we have, um, Hacker, would you like to speak to it? No, same thing Josh said. Okay, give me a second. I completely X'd out an important file of mine, so I just need to get that opened right now. So currently, we do have nominations for the MSU speaker, and these nominations are Maneeb Ahmed, Jessica Herskovich, Andrea Jongra. So um, right now I will ask, is there anyone else in the meeting who would like to nominate themselves who is currently not nominated? Okay. Just writing the motion right now. This is the motion at hand. So moved by Mirando, seconded by Hackett that we close the nomination for the MSU speaker of 2020 to 2021. If you're able to vote, um, if you can vote now is the time to do so. So please write in your vote if you're part of the SRA.
Okay. So the motion passes. Awesome. So right now I'm going to just explain kind of how this um how this op um, operating policy, how the election of speaker will work. So what will first happen is that we have um, each candidate will have a five minute time where they're able to do their presentation. Then they'll have 10 minutes of questioning per candidate pooled. So that will be then 30 minutes of questioning. And then and then in the end, we will have a closing statement uh, for these candidates. So for, um, what will happen first is we'll go alphabetically first for the for the presentations. So the first person who will be presenting is Manib Ahmed. So Manib, um, if you would like to present and um, that would be the time to do so. So you're able to now on mic your on mic your mic. And also if you have a presentation you'd like to share, you're able to screen share. If you have any questions about this, feel free to put them in the chat or just chat and talk through it. And I'll try to help you to make sure that you are able to screen share your presentation if so. But the floor is on you and I will be timing and I will and I will give you uh, probably a, me a message in the chat when you're at your limit. Can you hear all of this? I think so. Um, should I just start sharing my screen right now? Yes. As awesome. soon as you start talking in your presentation, I will be starting to time. I'll give you uh, is a one minute warning fine or would you like any more warnings? You're able to have as, mit and as many or as little warnings as you'd like. Um, I think a minute warning would be fine. OK, perfect. Uh, do I just start now? Um, are you currently sharing your screen? Uh, I am trying to, but I don't think I can. Uh, I'm like, I'm like trying to figure it out right now. Okay. Because um, if you start with uh, your present without the presentation, um, we won't be able to. Um, you'll the time will still start. Another option which you can do is, I believe, you might be able to put the presentation on in the group chat and then after we can continue from there. Uh, just let me let me try this. Um, does this work? Uh, does everybody see my screen? Yes. Um, well, I see you, OK, OK, awesome. Uh, do you Perfect. see the slides? Yes. Awesome. OK, just give give me a moment whenever you are ready. I will, as soon as you start speaking, I'll start timing. Awesome, okay. Hello everybody, my name is Manib Ahmed. Uh, I'm going into my fourth year of BHSC. I know all of you have to go through a lot of speeches today and tomorrow, so I'm gonna try my best to make this enjoyable and short for all of you. Um, it's only fair that I give you guys a little bit of background information about who the person speaking to you actually is. Um, I'm just gonna summarize myself as somebody who loves basketball. Um, especially back when in-person events used to be kind of a thing. I used to love watching games. Um, I also love playing basketball. So whether it's missing free throws on my driveway or uh, missing free throws on NBA 2K20, I just love basketball. I also really like enjoying reading. Uh, a book I'm reading right now is the autobiography of the founder of Nike called Shoe Knight. It's a very good book. It goes into the creation of the Jordan brand and stuff like that. Uh, but now I'm going to be talking about something that's a lot more relevant. Um, so I'm going to start off with just my related experiences. So I've been on the MSU Elections Committee for the past year, where I was responsible for promoting opportunities for student involvement, responsible for ratifying and validating election results, um, as well as mandating fair and transparent campaigning and deliberating motions on fines and appeals. While uh, like on the surface, this might sound pretty boring, I think it is very important to get more people involved in student advocacy and make sure that that process to do so is as smooth and wrinkle free as possible to make sure that as many people that want to run can run. Um, another relevant experience I have is being an undergraduate Senate, uh, undergraduate representative to the International Senate, where I also sit on the board of Senate Board of Student Appeals. Um, my work requires me to adjudicate penalties for student appeals and listen to concerns of both the student and the accuser, typically at a, fa typically, um, a faculty member at hearings. Um, being nonpartisan is pretty essential to this process because it is our responsibility to take into account all the evidence because um, it only gets to this point if someone goes to their faculty and the faculty says no. So this is something that's very important. Um, and we need to create an unbiased picture of the scenario from which we can give a final judgment. Um, there are inherent biases, such as, for example, me being a student, I am subconsciously inclined to support a fellow student. 
Um, but while it is important to acknowledge that, like there are unconscious biases, um, it must not actually affect your judgment. And I made this very clear when I was on the tribunal that I might have the tendency to do so, but I won't let it affect my judgment. And if anyone has any concerns regarding that, they should bring it up uh, whenever we're having a discussion or anything. Um, this is actually why the board has a student member as well as two faculty members at all times in an attempt to reduce bias. Um, I was also on the MSU Merit Award Committee where I was responsible for marking applications according to a rubric that we created uh, purely based on the merit of the application. Um, this is especially relevant because primarily the speaker actually serves as the chair for this committee. Um, and this means I have personal insight and experience to improve, improve um, some of the flaws I saw within the process. Um, one flaw that I saw was that there's a lack of blinding for applications, which I believe is like very, very important for objectivity. Um, overall, I think I have a broad set of experiences with an emphasis on objectivity, advocacy, and impartiality, which makes the speaker role a great fit for me. Um, in terms of my platform, I want to do two things. Um, increase accountability, sorry, increase accessibility, and hold SRAs accountable. For my first point, uh, this idea was actually suggested by another rep shout out to them. Um, I think it is important to produce short meeting minutes in a video form hosted by rotating SRA members uh, to shorten a six to seven hour live stream into a very digestible two to three minute video. Um, I personally don't know anybody who's going to look at a seven hour live stream and be like, oh, like I'm going to click this and watch the entire thing. So I think having a shorter video will definitely increase accessibility and give students a better understanding of what the SRA actually does. Um, another excellent idea I rep suggested was that we should hold a social media workshop in collaboration with his MSU communications team uh, to kind of educate and inform reps of the benefit in creating an Instagram page for their caucus. I think this will decrease the barriers between representatives connecting with their constituents, which is something I really want to look forward to uh, and work toward this year. Um, in terms of holding SRAs accountable, uh, I would first like to address any, sorry, I would first like to address any concerns SRAs have in private and not ever create a situation where a fuss or any issues might be created. Um, I want to be a source of help and support for the SRAs and make sure that if there is a pattern of absence, that I can be a source of support for them to help them work through this and attend meetings or accommodate for them if they can't. Um, I also think that this position involves a, um, that I also think that like generally positions that involve public assemblies favor students that are more extroverted. Um, and I think a solution has to be created in order to amplify the voices of more introverted individuals. Uh, one idea that I had was I wanted to create a Google form at the beginning of every single meeting uh, where representatives can either put their name or their caucus, so SRA science, SRA stock side, anything like that. And then any ideas, opinions, or concerns that they want to bring up, uh, they can do so. And then I can speak on their behalf. Um, I think in this way, the hesitation to speak out or uh, vocally or physically uh, would no longer be a hindrance because I would be able to do so for them. Uh, I am to bridge the gap between these individuals. Uh, one final, one final like brilliant idea a representative have uh, had was that like I think there is a need for the creation of a yearly rough itinerary just so all the important dates and meetings are blocked off for every member uh, well in advance. I think. Uh, it's important to make sure that all the deadlines and stuff are set well in advance just so like people can accommodate for other emergencies, stuff like that. Um, and I think like in the future as well, we should definitely call roll on the chat. I think just because of like technical issues and stuff like that, I think it's a lot better to just say it on chat uh, instead of maybe uh, people might not be comfortable speaking out in that setting or like it just have a lot and of And that is five minutes. Uh, yeah, can I just like end it off? No, sorry. Like you can no, end, finish your last thought though. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, that was just it for my presentation. Thank you for your time. Uh, and I hope that I can work together with you. OK. Thank you for your presentation, Manib. Thank you. We are now going to go to the next um, presentation, which is Jessica Herskovich. Jessica, are you here? Yes, I am. Can you all hear me? Um, if is it working? It in the group chat. I can hear you, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to try to share my screen. Let me know if it works. This one. Is it working? No. No. Share screen one. Oh, there we go. Is that? Are you all able to see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay. Perfect. 
Um, one moment, we have a point of information. Um, De uh, Della Vadova, please um, speak it up. I was just curious, um, in the SRA election cheat sheet, did it said 15 minute presentation by each candidate? 15 like minute presentation for VP candidates, it's five minutes for speaker elections. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, thank you. Uh, okay, not a problem. And then uh, we have a point of information from Samson. Uh, yes, I'm just wondering if all candidates can post their platforms in the chat just so that we can flip through them more easily and in case not every SRA has received it. Okay, great, um, thanks. Let's see that. Okay, and we have a point of information from Added, from Dixit, sorry. No worries. Um, uh, I'm getting messages from constituents asking if they can join the live stream. I'm just wondering what the best response is. Um, so, so currently they're not able to join the live stream, but we are recording it as soon as the meeting is done. We'll be blessed we've had the and so unfortunately they are not able to join the live stream. I, we apologize for the inconvenience. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. And, um, Okay. Any, I don't see any more points of information. So we are now going to continue with um, Jessica, your presentation. As soon as you start talking, I will time you. Do you, how many um, warnings do you want? Um, could I have a one minute and a 30 second warning, please? Okay, whenever you're ready. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so hello and good morning to you all. Uh, I first want to start off by congratulating you all on your achievements thus far and for having the courage to run for these positions. I had the pleasure of chatting and meeting with a lot of you this week, um, and I, without a doubt, after all of our conversations, am so excited to see all of the wonderfully incredible things you do all year and your lasting impact on the MSU. Um, so to start, I just want to share some information about me and uh, the experience that have shaped me into the person before you today. So I'm in my third year of justice, political philosophy and law with a specialized minor in commerce. I have had an interest for law ever since I was nine um, and first watched Legally Blonde and Elle Woods in action. Um, and as I continued doing research and actually grasped an idea of what law really was, my love and interest for law grew fonder, specifically human rights, sorry, human rights law. Um, and then later going into two years of my program, I realized I have an additional passion for constitutional law as well. Both of these kinds of law are really interesting for me because uh, the way that I interpret them, they both align with my passion for helping and supporting others and my community or um, communities in ways that allow for individual and community growth. This has been a passion of mine for my whole life uh, and my time at McMaster has truly helped me realize that through my different extracurricular activities and experiences. Um, so, from my time as a residence orientation representative to being a Horizons leadership developer and even as vice chair internal on the MSU First Year Council, I realized I really enjoy creating and fostering these supportive and welcoming community environments. Um, so, and safer spaces for individuals um, that allow for them to feel more comfortable and in order for them to share their opinions, um, be themselves and ultimately grow. I saw this mainly as a residence rep and a Horizons LD, where I was able to watch first year delegates and students and residents alike feel more open to being themselves and sharing their thoughts and views on mundane to sensitive topics as my teams and I helped foster these safer and supportive environments. Um, my time for your council also connects to creating these welcoming and supportive spaces, not only for the council uh, during team meetings that I chaired, but also for first years in general. Um, additionally, my time on FIKE was my first exposure to the MSU and uh, ultimately led me to running for an SRA Humanity seat this past year. This past year was definitely a very interesting time to be on the SRA, um, and I learned a lot about the various issues the SRA can tackle, how the SRA functions as a whole, and learned a lot on how to make things more feasible for different SRA-run projects and initiatives. I was fortunate to be given the opportunity um, to be a voting member on Executive Board and the Municipal Affairs Committee, where I gained a lot of experience in exercising impartiality and challenging my biases. 
while I was on executive board, uh, I had to practice being unbiased not only to individuals, but also to certain content and difficult decisions. This was particularly exemplified through my time sitting on various uh, hiring boards for part-time managers, uh, where I would be faced with the resume or interview candidate who happened to be of someone close to me or who I knew from the past. I learned how to put my personal biases and preconceived notions behind me in order to make the best decision and choose the best candidates. Um, so I also had the opportunity to learn, sorry, I also had the opportunity to learn more about policymaking and advocacy efforts through my time on the gender and sexual diversity policy paper team and the municipal affairs committee as well. All of this experience has exposed me to so much within the MSU and I would not be in front of you all running for this position without all my past experiences pushing me towards this opportunity. Being on the SRA last year helped me identify um, a lot of gaps that I think can be really easily filled by my platform points, which leads me to my final slide of some goals for the 2020-2021 year if elected to MSU speaker. The first being SRA transparency and accessibility. And one major point I want to focus on is looking into new microphones and live transcribing for SRA meetings. Also in collaboration with the communications team doing bi-weekly SRA takeovers and two to three minute monthly recaps. Uh, the second is improvement of General Assembly. I have a ton of ideas on this platform point, but I really want to focus on in introducing um, community roundtable sessions run by SRA members to increase conversations about GA and focus on uh, informational informational promotions. Um, and then also, I want to work with the incoming VP admin to personalize SRA training and running a few mock meetings for you guys to fully get a sense of how I've, what everything is and how everything works. Um, so that's about it. Thank you all for listening, and I look forward to discussing more of my platform in the question period. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. And now we are going to our third, um, our third speaker nomination, which is Rhea Jangra. Rhea, are you here? Um, yeah. Um, I'm just going to try and share my screen really quickly and see if that Perfect. works. Perfect. Give me one second. Um, can you all see my screen? I can see it. Wait, it's loading, but yes. Perfect. So um, what things would you like to have from me? Uh, one minute before the end would be great, actually. One minute, got it. So whenever you start speaking is when I'll start timing. All right, that's great. Hi everyone, my name is Rhea Janger and I'm running to be your MSU speaker for this coming year. Um, so a little, uh, I'll go over my presentation really quickly, but just to get it started, I want to congratulate you all on being elected to the SRA. It's by no means an easy feat to run an election or even to be on the council and um, I'm excited to see all the wonderful thing, the things that you'll all be doing this coming year. Um, so just some fun facts about me before we get started. I'm going into my fourth year of the BHSC program next year. I'm also a really big gardening enthusiast, and for the past two years, I was a coxswain on the McMaster varsity rowing team, uh, and I, that's still something I do on the side. Um, I, before we get into it, I wanted to give a little bit of an, a role overview of who the MSU speaker is to frame the rest of my presentation. Um, but this is just sort of an overview of what it is. It's available. The job description is available on the MSU website for all of those who are interested. Um, I'm just going to skip the slide for now because it's a little bit um, nitty gritty. In terms of my past experiences for what makes me qualified to run for this position, um, for one, I was one of the SRA Health Sciences Caucus members last year. Um, and that's sort of given me knowledge in terms of creating and executing uh, your plan, as well as given me familiarity with Robert's roles in practice. I think that as many of you will soon realize, there's a big, there's a steep learning curve between um, looking at Robert's rules on paper and actually seeing what they look like in practice. And I think that's given me um, a lot of experience with that. In addition, I had the privilege to be a voting member on both the Internal Governance and Services Standing Committees last year as part of the SRA. Um, through the Internal Governance Committee, it's given me a lot of information and knowledge surrounding, you know, what the MSU looks like from a policy structural standpoint, and it's given me a lot of familiarity with those relevant documents, and I think the speaker should be able to um, have that sort of knowledge going into the role. Um, in addition, on the Services Standing Committee, I helped conduct service reviews of a couple of MSU services, and in those meetings, I had to remain nonpartisan in an effort to evaluate each of these services objectively to sort of set forth the, be the best set of um, uh, the best set of recommendations moving forward. 
Um, in addition to that, um, I've also been involved in Model UN since high school. It's something I really enjoy. And, and something I noticed in walking into the SRA role was that the way that SRA meetings are conducted is actually very similar to the way that Model UN committees are run. And so I've actually had experience chairing those Model UN committees for many years now. And I think that I've had experience sort of um, equitably ensuring uh, voices are heard within a debate arena and um, ensuring that everyone's opinions are fairly expressed. And so I think that is something I could really bring and translate over pretty easily to the speaker role. Um, and again, would be a great asset to have. Um, in terms of two of my platform points, the first thing I wanted to focus on is maintaining SRA transparency and accessibility. Obviously, this is a big one that a lot of people talk about, um, but something I would want to do is really ensure that um, I have a strong working relationship with the MSU communications officer um, to create consistent promotional material that will be um, coming around and distributed to all SRA members every week. Um, because there's obviously something happening in the MSU every week and giving it to the SRA members is a very easy way to ensure that that information gets out there to constituents. In addition, something I'd want to do is condense key policies and bylaws that are being discussed at each meeting, um, working with the ABP internal governance to um, sort of condense those uh, long um, those long documents um, into um, much shorter uh, summaries so that it's, again, more accessible to constituents and um, the SRA alike. And uh, again, not everyone comes in having done the reading and their homework, and this is a good way to ensure that everyone's sort of on the same page moving to the meeting. Um, in addition, uh, as per, there's an operating policy that exists called the SRA Communication and Outreach Operating Policy, and essentially it mandates that every meeting should be summarized in some way, shape, or form. And something I would want to do is definitely work with all caucuses to create those meeting summary materials. I sort of envision that looking like a, again, just a graphic wherein one would fill in the text and sort of distribute that graphic to all the SRAs on the uh, assembly. But again, it could also look like a video, and it's sort of up to the discretion of the um, SRA members who are responsible for that week. And finally, I think maintaining accountability is a big part of that. So just checking in and reminding the caucus members throughout the year um, that there are reports coming up, deliverables that they need to get into me, um, and that and it's just ensuring that those deadlines are met to um, make sure that transparency is held up and those documents get onto the MSU page. Um, another big platform point I wanted to focus on is SRA support, um, and I think it's a gap that the SRA that the speaker role could very easily fill here. Um, I think that walking into the SRA role is quite overwhelming, as many of you know, and I wanted to sort of highlight the scope of the SRA role um, in the trainings that we sort of provide to you all. Um, in addition to providing an exemplar year plan and feedback for all submitted year plans that, that um, you would all submit in July. Um, I think that having that second set of eyes is really valuable. In addition, I'd want to have year plan check-ins with each of the caucuses at the end of first semester just to sort of troubleshoot any difficulties anyone's having. And finally, just ensuring that effective SRA training is um, sort of given to you all, that it's SRA directed at the end of the day. I'd wanted to collaborate with the incoming VP admin to ensure that those topics are engaging and topical and deemed per whatever is deemed pertinent by the SRA members. Um, that's sort of a summary of it, but thank you all for listening to me. Marianne, you're muted. Really am. Thank you. I'm so sorry. So as I was saying, um, right now, that was um, the five minute presentation from each candidate. Now we're going to be going to the 10 minutes of questions per pool. So what that means is that we'll have 30 minutes um, total. Um, what will happen, candidates, is that you'll each get a turn to answer first. We'll be going alphabetically, then rotating it as so. So um, currently, I would like to open the floor. Give me a second. I need to start the timer on my end. So currently, I'd like to add myself to speakers list to ask questions to the candidates. Um, now will be the time. So it, it is your, yours, yours to go. Hack it. Oh, my apologies. Um, yes, so my question is, um, how do you all plan to support and work with the SRA throughout your term as elected to ensure that they fulfill their year plan? And Ahmed, you're going first for this question. Nice. Um, yeah, that's a great question. I think that was also part of my platform. I think it's important to 
have a discussion with either the caucuses or individuals themselves to kind of work over the platform and what ideas they have to the table. There's something that I actually did um, prior to even entering the, entering this election. Um, some of the ideas that people have brought forward to me is that they kind of want to, uh, some people want to look at repealing a certain ban. So I think it's something that warrants a lot of discussion and debate. So uh, I'm like trying to facilitate that from happening, creating both sides of the argument and then trying to make them connect so they can actually present an argument to the SRA. Um, another idea of a phenomenal representative had was that they wanted to talk to the program um, directors at the Pulse to kind of uh, negotiate different ter different times for sessions. So like spin cycle, Zumba, something like that. I think both of them are like ideas that definitely should be discussed and debated. Um, so I think I help them uh, with connecting with each other, trying to find like minded people so they can both create a supporting and a opposing argument. Um, so yeah, that's just something I really plan to do. And I really want to make sure that I um, may, meet with people as well to like further discuss their ideas or any uh, future concerns that they have so I can help address them. Okay, Herskovich. Um, Shamar, do you mind, or sorry, Hackett, do you mind uh, possibly repeating the question? Absolutely. So the question was, how do you plan to support and work alongside the SRA throughout your term to ensure that they are fulfilling the points laid out in their year plan? Um, so I think personally, like that starts off with um, how we start the year off. And so I really want to be personalizing a lot of the support that I'm giving to SRA members. Um, by having these discussions, having conversations at the beginning of the year um, to ensure that their year plans and their structure for the year plans are like feasible, um, that they really know what they want to grasp and coming up with ways together um, in order to achieve their goals um, on their year plans. Uh, I think also something that wasn't in my platform, but um, something that's been kind of going around a lot is just check-ins um, throughout the year. I think that could be really useful as well um i know personally like as an ror in the past having check-ins with my roa has been really really useful for event planning and for my goals so i would really like to bring that in as well and do um like either monthly or in between semester check-ins okay jangra raya <laughs> yeah no worries um for sure I think that this is something I really wanted to emphasize again in my year plan and what's something I would want to implement um, moving forward. Um, I think that the relationship between the SRA and the speaker should be really clearly delineated um, and that the SRA should be able to reach out to the speaker for any questions, concerns they have um, early on in the year and throughout the year. Um, something I would want to do, like I said, is um, implementing year plan feedback. I think that having that second set of eyes could be really valuable in allowing people to, you know, um, question the feasibility of certain year plan points and making sure that everything that they want to get done um, and they want to set out to get done actually is accomplished at the end of the day. And I think that the speaker hold a, could hold could play a really big role in ensuring that accountability aspect of it. Um, so yeah, having those uh, that year plan feedback, but in addition to that, having a mandatory end of first semester check in with caucus leaders. Um, and setting up those one-on-one -on -one meetings. Obviously, other caucus members could attend if they would want to. Um, but again, just using that time and space to sort of talk about, you know, just the SRA role in general, how they're feeling, but any difficulties, successes that they've come up that have come up along the way, and like troubleshooting with them, um, consulting different stakeholders that are relevant to the situation. Um, to, you know, so consulting maybe the VP admin, whoever else might be a better resource than me um, in that particular situation. But yeah, I would definitely want to ensure that that the relationship between the SRA and the speaker is clearly delineated and that they should be able to come and um, sort of contact me about any issues or concerns that they have, particularly those that pertain to the year plan. Okay. So now we're going to move to Singh. Okay, hello everyone. Um, great job uh, first giving like uh, introductory presentations. Uh, I really hope that this election will be nice and competitive and get a good candidate. Um, so my question, it's similar to the one that I asked actually way back last year. Um, that's because we had one candidate who was on the, um, uh, I guess, the election committee, I guess, of the president and one from the SRA. So I wanted to ask about biases, and that's what I'll do right now. Um, you all have been either student union or McMaster positions before. So I would like to ask how you feel those might bias you and what you'll do to prevent that bias. So specifically, 
to um, Ria and Jess. This would be in relation to your SRA um, role. Um, you're not able to go ahead and point uh, questions to at people yet. Oh, no, I was going to say, like, I was about to get to Maneva and say that in relation to his role on the Senate so that okay. he could talk about that bias and they could talk about their SRA bias. Okay, I just wanted to ensure that questions weren't being pointed. For sure. Um, uh, did you finish your six words? Yeah, that was pretty much it. If any of you want me to clarify when it's your turn to speak, feel free to ask. Perfect. Jessica, you're up first. I'm first just gonna, yeah, if you wouldn't mind clarifying again, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so pretty much um, how has your role being on SRA last year, how do you think that'll bias you for this role? And what will you do to prevent that? Um, so I actually see my role in the SRA last year, um, not so much as a bias, um, but actually a bit as like, not an edge, I guess like a uniqueness um, in, a, in a sense, but like, it's definitely beneficial because um, I, am able to have this like preconceived understanding of how the SRA functions, how the M MSU functions, um, how to increase feasibility of like your plans and everything. So I also being on executive board um, was able to rein in any bias through a lot of difficult decisions on like on different content and um, different individuals. So I think my SRA experience um, wouldn't necessarily necessarily lend me a bias, but actually is really beneficial to staying impartial and staying objective in the speaker role. Um, and it gave me a lot of opportunities to challenge my biases last year that I would again bring um, into the speaker role this year and take that impartial stance um, and take that unbiased stance. Rhea? Yeah, for sure. I think that's a great question, Simran. Very valid question. Um, but I do think that, you know, irrespective of if someone's been on the SRA or not, if they've been on the Senate or not, I think that every at the end of the day, every individual is human and brings in their own personal biases to a situ situation, regardless of the roles that they've held before. So it's more so a matter of, you know, are you able to separate your personal biases um, from, you know, the role that you'll actually be carrying out? And can you ensure that, you know, voices are equitably heard at the end of the day in this in within the assembly. Um, so I definitely think that um, I am able to do that and I've been able to demonstrate that in the past through my um, time on the services committee, through my time on the internal governance committee, conducting those reviews and ensuring that, you know, that's done with an objective lens. I think that I've been able to do that again through my model UN experience. I've had experience sort of moderating debate and ensuring people's voices are fairly heard at the end. I also think that um, you know, uh, people do slip up and uh, if, you know, for that, as you're all sort of aware, um, the speaker is sort of chairing these meetings alongside the administrative assistant with Victoria. And I would definitely, you know, have that open conversation with her to sort of discuss, you know, if to have her essentially hold the speaker accountable to the role um, and to ensure that, again, people are being heard at the end of the day. That's sort of the role and to ensure that the entire meeting is sort of running as smoothly as possible. So. Um, yeah, but I do think that if anything, like Jess said, that the SRA experience brings a little bit of it, it's an asset at the end of the day um, with the speaker role because you have familiarity with the way that the assembly runs and with the rules and procedure. And I think that's really critical. You have to know those inside and out and be able to answer the questions for especially newer, newer SRA members. Um, and yeah, I think that so basically sums it up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, I think that is a very good question. Like, again, I mentioned how I deal with unconscious bias all my time on the Center Board of Student Appeals. Um, again, it's important to acknowledge the fact that they do exist and to remind people that if they think it might be affecting my judgment, that either one, I excuse myself from that uh, scenario, or I should be told that, oh, like, uh, this might not be something that would require your input because you're not being completely impartial here. And I think, like, it's just important being honest because, like, um, no matter how much we try, like we, we do all have inherent and unconscious biases. Um, so again, just acknowledging the fact that they do exist, um, it's important and uh, to bring that up in any uh, conversation with that might be relevant. Um, in terms of my time on the Senate, I was actually one of four students that were um, on that Senate um, uh, on that Senate floor and everyone else was either a uh, faculty member or a dean or something like that. Um, and my voice was one of was 
my, my voice in that like floor was basically one to support students and I think fighting for them that was basically my uh, role and I think like I hope to translate that into my experience um, as speaker to remind people that they took this position to be representative uh, to basically support students and to be a voice for the students and to uh, represent their opinions, concerns, ideas to the assembly. And I think my Senate experience would help me uh, facilitate that. Marianne, I think your mic may be muted. Okay. Sorry. I'm having a couple of internet connectivity issues, so please bear with me. Next, can people hear me or no? If you can hear me, please message just so I know what's happening. <sighs> Hello. Okay. Perfect. No, my mic wasn't. I might internet. Oh my goodness. Alrighty, while Marianne connects, I'm just going to keep bringing us through the speakers list. Um, so next is Adiola. Before that, can I raise a point of information? Yes, you can. I don't know who's speaking, but you can. Oh, sorry. It's Adrian. I don't know why I'm not showing up. Adrian <laughs> says it goes. Anyways, um, do candidates have a one minute response time each or as much as they need? Um, I, yeah, it's one minute response. Um, hello, uh, can you hear me now or no? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Perfect. Sorry, my internet completely cut off. It's actually not one minute. It's one minute for VPs, but speakers don't have any restrictions to how long they want to answer. Thank you. Okay. I apologize. My internet literally just dropped off, so I needed to fix that quickly, which is why there was an um, issue over there. Um, Isa, do you have a point of information? Um, uh, yes, I have a point of information. Um, so question from a few candidates. Do we have access to speakers notes when you screen share? Um, can one candidate say who if they're able to answer and then after we're able to cede their time to them, please. I, uh, I don't believe so. I think that the speaker notes would then be shared um, across everyone if that's something that you're comfortable with. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, we're going to then continue where I left off students. And so we're going to now continue with Egg Bayami. 
um, it is now your question. I again, I apologize for the issue with my internet. Eric Bayemi. Agbiemi, hello. We can hear you. Okay. Okay. So, in that sense, then we are then going to continue on with Dehab. Hello, um, Sabrina. Thank you all so much for putting your hat in the ballot. Um, I just got a quick question. Um, you've all spoken about like accessibility in some capacity. Um, and I'm interested in talking specifically about like accessibility to the student body beyond the SRA members in that like a lot of, um, so the, the MSU has historically had like a pretty rocky relationship with the student body for the way it's dealt with like a lot of issues, like around like Maroons, for example, um, the Pride Community Center, low voter turnout rate, just like a lot of issues. So I'm interested in how you're, um, how you will support the SRA and also on your own, how you will work to sort of like Try and um, try and mend the, like like the relationship with the rest of the students at Mac as we are representing all students. Okay, Rhea, you're up first. Um, yeah, I think that's definitely a valid question. Um, I think that's something to that's some, something that's important to consider. Um, and like thinking about this question is again the scope of the speaker because at the end of the day, they don't exactly have um, the main role I, I see the speaker playing is more so, you know, as an SRA support, um, you know, chairing the meetings equitably and ensuring voices are heard. But I also think you're right um, in that they do hold their the student body should be holding the speaker and the SRA accountable, the assembly as a whole accountable um, to ensuring, you know, that topical issues are being discussed and the concerns are being brought to the table. Um, I do think that, um, like Jessica mentioned, um, there's a lot of different ways that you can sort of go about doing that, whether in terms of accessibility, that's improving the live stream in a number of ways to ensure students know where to get that information and can watch the meetings in an accessible, in a, in an accessible manner. Um, but also in terms of just um, generally um, improving the SRA's outreach and their presence in student life, I think that, that again, the social media aspect of it could definitely be played up. I do think that um, there's always room for improvement there and ensuring, you know, that um, communication material is distributed frequently to SRA members and that, you know, it's made a, a priority of the assembly to ensure that um, information is sort of um, being distributed um, amongst the student body. Um, I think that if we set that priority at the forefront of the school year um, and ensure that everyone's on the same page with that, then it's definitely something that we could improve on as a whole. So I would sort of hope to um, enable the SRA to do that in my role as speaker. Okay, Mini. Uh, yeah, like that's a really good question, Sabrina. I think like um, this is a pretty good opportunity to talk about kind of like the outfit in the room. I think Ria raised a bunch of really good points. Um, I think like voter turnout on average has been going down since the time of being at McMaster. I think um, there are a lot of issues with like the whole like you know uh, perspective and kind of uh, issues that perceivability might have. Um, I think like other like numbers that I think we should be worried about is that the MSU had the highest opt-out rate in the entire province among all universities. Um, fewer and fewer people are showing up to general assemblies uh, or even bothering to run for elections with the number of candidates actually like going down every single year with exceptions to certain faculties. Uh, we'll leave that. But I'm not here to assign like blame on like any administration, committee or individual. I think like on the contrary, I was actually on the elections committee and I can like assure you that we did everything in our power, like humanly possible to encourage people to run. Whether it was me personally messaging people to tell them to run, uh, to you know, uh, make a difference, something like that, or the committee as a whole posting on social media. Um, I think like this is like a bigger issue. And I think like um, there has to be like a little bit of like serious drastic change. I think like this trend might just keep continuing. And I think like the international community will continue to isolate from the union uh, that is like there to support 
support them, to represent them. And what I want to do is to bring in newer student communities into the fold. I want to show them that the SRA is accessible to them and that the SRA's primary responsibility is to help their constituents. I think that's why I want to have these video of uh, this uh, video meeting to kind of translate a six hour, seven hour live stream into something a lot more accessible, like a two, three minute video. Uh, I want to create those Instagram pages for caucuses to help their constituents um, to make sure that the constituents know that they can message the page uh, to voice their opinions, share any ideas, hold, like talk about their concerns, uh, and also to hold these social media workshops with the representatives to kind of increase accessibility. All these ideas that I've suggested are like pretty small in scale for sure. They're very easy to implement, I think, but they all aim to slowly increase the trust of the student body with the MSU. Um, I understand that change happens slowly, but my slow and sustained and consistent strategy that other speakers have mentioned as well is a positive change in the direction of uh, rehabilitation. I think change starts from the not from the top, but from the bottom. And I think we need to facilitate that by creating better connection with students. And that the, the connection between the rep, the representative and the constituent is the, basically the best way to facilitate that. And yeah. Is it my, okay. Um, so I think a lot of um, really, really great points were brought up here. Um, I just want to focus on a few of my platform points in terms of SRA transparency and accessibility, which I think um, really focus well on um, engaging with constituents more. I think a really big issue that we have is that we engage with them um, in a very like information attacking way rather than conversations. Um, so through my platform, I continuously include points on how I really want to engage in more constituent conversation um, throughout the year, whether that be specifically on uh, about General Assembly um, and having these uh, community roundtables where we are giving information, gaining feedback, also creating less daunting environments um, for students to ask questions about General Assembly and the SRA in general. Um, I think also as it was mentioned by both candidates that, um, you know, like the live streams are a really big issue currently. There isn't very much engagement, but I think it's really hard to have engagement with something that is really hard to watch um, and to listen to. So that's why I really want to work on increasing um, the accessibility within the uh, meeting. So whether that be when we're back into live meetings, um, looking into new microphones or more microphones and working with the VP Finance and AvTech to include that. And then also including live transcribing because it's really hard um, to, to, if we're not able to get new microphones, I think live transcribing would be really great. Live transcribing would be really great to begin with um, in, in addition to the new microphones um, to make the SRA meetings just more accessible. And then hopefully that will also engage students a bit more because you know, you're know you able to hear the live streams a bit better. And if not, you're able to at least read what people are saying. Um, another thing is just, again, ensuring that we're connecting with constituents and engaging as much as possible. Um, so my other platform point of like SRA takeovers biweekly for um, these fun biweekly recaps, and then also two to three monthly minute videos um, as well, working with the comms team. Uh, I think those are a bunch of ways that we can properly engage with constituents and hopefully create um, more connection with them throughout the year. I think also if meetings continue to be online, I have thought of some different ways that we can make them more accessible to constituents um, in terms of like providing social media training to SG members, which was mentioned by Manib. Um, that could be extremely, extremely useful to create like, um, sorry, clean marketing strategies and, and ways that we can have co more conversation uh, with constituents, but also even just little things like putting on the closed captions in Teams meetings, that could be really, really helpful um, for students and then also maybe ensuring that SRA members are wearing headphones during the meeting so that there's a microphone um, near closer to um, where people are speaking and then there's no not as much background noise so I think these are just a lot of little ways that we can improve in order to improve our connections with constituents throughout the year improve our engagement with constituents throughout the year as well. Okay perfect um, next we're going to be going on to Miranda. Hello. Um, so uh, the role of the speaker extends far past just the bi-weekly meetings, which is reflected in the job description that was posted. Um, so I'm curious how you plan on balancing and prioritizing the logistic responsibilities of the role um, and ensuring that you are fulfilling that role that exists outside of those bi-weekly meetings. Okay, Manib, you're up first. 
Uh, yeah, that's a really good point. And I think um, I mentioned previously when I was giving my presentation, I think creating a yearly itinerary would be very helpful for everybody involved with the SRA, whether it be uh, associate VPs or like the executive board or the SRAs themselves. I think it's pretty important to create something like that. Um, maybe create like rough dates when a general assembly would be uh, dates that we sh I, sh I should have meetings with other people. I think like just having a comprehensive schedule for my own um, sake would basically make me first of all, accountable for making sure that everything, all the tasks are done on time and done early if possible and also done to the best of my ability. And that only happens if I'm completely aware of like everything I'm supposed to be, um, first of all, responsible for, but also like in charge of running, in charge of facilitating stuff like meetings, stuff like general assemblies, which I'm also uh, responsible for orchestrating and organizing. So I think like making sure that those days are kind of set in stone, uh, maybe in the distant future, but also like just to know that this, like week exists so that I'm kind of aware of that fact and I'm also like able to accommodate for that able to prepare for that but also make that week kind of available for that particular event and yeah okay and next up will be Jessica sorry I realized my mic was muted um Josh do you mind just repeating the question one more time yeah, for sure. Um, Thank you. So the role of the speaker extends far past the biweekly meetings as reflected in the job description. How do you plan on balancing and prioritizing the logistic responsibilities of the role and ensuring that you're fulfilling that role outside of meetings? Okay, thank you. Um, so thank you for that question. I think it's really important um, for me to highlight just like a few things that I've learned throughout the years. Um, so being on SRA last year, there was definitely a lot um, going on and wanting to fulfill my year plan with my caucus um, while also um, fulfilling like personal goals and um, being on executive board and the municipal affairs committee and also on a policy paper team while also managing schoolwork. Um, there was a lot going on. And so I think like there's a similar aspect to um, how much the speaker role takes on as well. Um, and I learned a lot about prioritizing last year um, through all of my experiences. Uh, one thing that I found that really worked for me um, was to create an agenda. I really, I really like agendas. I really like weekly schedules. Um, and so especially writing to-do lists as well. Um, so that was like one way that I learned how to balance and prioritize my work and ensure that I was fulfilling um, everything that I really needed to get done. Um, and so I would bring in all of those skills and all of that organizational and time management skill that I learned last year into this role um, and really ensure that I'm not only chairing meetings as equitably and as fairly as possible, um, but also balancing, you know, the event planning aspect of General Assembly uh, that the speaker role takes on, and then um, also the chairing of other meetings um, that the speaker also takes on, um, and then also just working with the SRA in general uh, outside of chairing meetings. So I think a lot of responsibility in this role, um, but through my past skill set, I think I would be able to accomplish and, and achieve all of the goals and and fulfill all of the um, kind of logistical things that go on within the speaker role. Awesome. And next is Rhea, I believe. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's a great question. Um, as you said, I think that the speaker role is definitely a multifaceted role and extends beyond just the meetings. And I think that um, at the end of the day, you need to be able to hold yourself accountable to these things to, you know, ensuring that your responsibilities are taken care of and completed at the end. But you also need to be able to have checks and balances in place external to that. And I do think that um, something I would want to do um, is to sort of check uh, touch base at the beginning of the year um, with all of the individuals that I sort of have those responsibilities to, whether it's the elections committee or internal governance committee. Um, or in, uh, VP admin when it comes to planning general assembly, um, touching base with all of those relevant stakeholders to ensure that, you know, yes, um, I'm getting my job done, but that also they can hold me accountable to getting that job done. I think that's also an important aspect of it. 
Um, I also think that maybe perhaps having some sort of a shared Google calendar for all SRA members, you know, with my um, availability and when I'm sort of going to be busy or, you know, attending certain events, you know, meetings, General Assembly might be a, a good idea, you know, just so that that is public and that's transparent and that people are aware of, you know, what I'm doing, but also, you know, again, holding me accountable to that. Um, I also think that um, I have experience in the past, you know, balance with time management and um, organizing um, large groups of people and um, sort of balancing my extracurricular life with my school life. And that's definitely something I could translate over to the speaker role quite effectively. Um, but yeah, I do think that, you know, kind of along with Manib's point, just ensuring that, um, you know, there's some sort of the d dates that are set in stone are sort of um, prioritized and um, that's highlighted to the SRA, but also the student body if they want that information. Um, just so that um, I'm holding myself accountable to getting those things done, but that this other people are as well. Okay, Al Young. Hi, sorry. Um, I want to say thank you. And like, it sounds like many of you guys have really exciting ideas, um, such as like the monthly recaps or like additional feedback meetings for SRA members. Um, so that being said, um, what measures will we be putting in place to ensure that the implementation of these platform points will have a minimal burden on SRA members? Jessica, you're up first. Thank you so much for that question. Um, so I think one really important thing that like I personally have been doing already is just having a lot of consultations um, from like the from the get go and um, ensuring that there is a lot of feasibility with a lot of these um, ideas that I'm putting forth uh, to ensure that by the time that it gets to the SRA and by the time that I'm working with the SRA, like everything is already put in place um, and that there's not an additional burden being put on the SRA because you guys have such large roles already. So um, while I was coming up with my platform points and my plan, I was also coming up with the feasibilities behind them. Um, so I think that's like one or like one step already and that that step can continue throughout the year. Um, and oh, sorry, I just saw your message in the chat. Um, and um, yes, uh, so to ensure that those feasibilities are put in place before um, they are fully coming to you guys, but to still be having those open lines of communication and updating you all on um, what's going on with those plans, um, but ensuring that like the finality of those plans isn't too much on you all and that you're not all like completely working towards this if you don't want to be um, and ensuring that like there are steps put in place before it gets to you. I hope that made sense. Um, but yeah, so just like working on the feasibilities beforehand and throughout the year. Um, so that when it gets to you guys, it's kind of more so final product like and all of the um, behind the scenes work was already put in place and put together um, and worked out, but also ensuring the open lines of communication in case people want to get involved. Thank you. Sorry, next is Rhea. Yeah, for sure. I think that's definitely a valid question yeah. coming from an SRA perspective. Um, uh, kind of along the lines of what Jess said, I definitely think that feasibility is something that is um, really important to take into consideration here. And that prior to any of the actual platform points that I've suggested, prior to any of those actually going into action, going into play, um, I would definitely want to consult with the relevant stakeholders, and whether that's you know any of the VPs or all of you folks on the SRA. Um, as to whether you would deem it to be um, beneficial to you all. Because at the end of the day, it's not, if it, I think it's a good idea, other people might not have that same opinion. And I think that having that sort of, again, second um, set of eyes on a set of ideas is really important, um, even for me. And so I would definitely want to have those consultations and feedback from other individuals just to sort of check on, you know, whether these platform points are actually something that people want to see. Um, and in terms of a minimal burden on the SRA, um, other than the platform points for me in particular that um, actively involve the SRA, I don't foresee them having a significant burden on other SRA members. But again, ensuring that 
that relationship is delineated between the speaker and the SRA that they can come to me if they have any questions or concerns or they feel as though something is burdening them. Um, it's definitely, um, I think it's important to ensure that that relationship is clear and that people can have that open conversation with me regardless of when that's occurring. Um, but yeah, definitely ensuring that feasibility is a big aspect of it and um, making sure that it's not having sort of other repercussions that I sort of want my platform points to have. Mini? Yeah, I think, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, I think, um, again, as I mentioned previously, like most of my ideas are something that I myself can implement and orchestrate um, in order to essentially reduce the burden on the SRA, um, such as creating the Google form to allow more introverted voices to speak out in a debate kind of setting, uh, as well as creating a, a yearly itinerary just in, uh, in terms of informing everybody regarding any concrete dates or any, uh, but obviously the bi-weekly meetings as well, but also like other events that might uh, occur. Um, in fact, most of my changes are these quality of life improvements for the SRA. So if anything, um, I plan to make these changes in order to decrease the burden on the SRA. Um, whether it be holding a social media workshop before um, actually asking anybody to create a Instagram page, because in terms of there, there's a lack of cons consistency because some caucus have some, uh, some caucuses have one and others don't. And I think uh, it's important to you know address that and to re communicate with specifically with caucuses to understand the reasonings behind it. Um, and, and again, I, I really need a lot of feedback before I actually implement any of my ideas. And like, I think other candidates have mentioned this previously, but like, you know, keeping to making sure to fine tune my answers, fine tune my ideas, my platforms, and make sure that like I can do my job. So to make you guys, you know, uh, to make the representatives do their job more effectively, I think is very important. Okay. And that is the end of our question period. So I would like to thank the candidates for having that pool question time. And now we'll be moving on to the next section of our period. So this is going to be right now five minutes of individualized questions per candidate. Um, usually at this time, um, you would be we would leave the room. But as we can see, this has been waived for the operating policy. So at this time, I just um, request that you go and you mute, you mute your mutt, like you mute yourself off and just kind of like be as respectful as as you would what, like to see in that section. So the first person that we will be starting with is Mani, but for this question period. So I would like to open up the floor for questions if people would like to ask Mani individual questions and this period is just for Mani. Would anyone like to add themselves to the speakers list? Okay, Josh, you are up. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm just wondering how you might um, be able to fill the gap not being um, an SRA member previously. Um, so speaking to how you might uh, address gaps with Robert's rules knowledge, how meetings work, um, specific um, dates and activities, as well as just general bylaws of the MSU. Yeah, um, I think that's a very good question. And I think um, my experience on the Senate where, you know, there is Robert's rules and there's a lot of uh, parliamentary procedure um, and I've done that for quite a while now. So I think I am pretty familiar with the overall Robert's rules and like the procedures behind parliamentary procedure. Um, so I think, yeah, like in terms of that, like I do have a lot of relevant experience um, in terms of like the SRA bylaws and uh, other um, issues. I was on the elections committee, so I think I have a pretty good understanding of uh, first of all, you know, uh, how to be a good candidate, how to uh, make sure that you're not, you know, disobeying any laws. So I like I know that aspect of like um, adhering to guidelines, adhering to bylaws and making sure not to, um, you know, not to uh, uh, inadvertently maybe uh, violate a bylaw. I know the procedures for that. I know how to properly, you know, present myself to make sure that I, I act as a role model for the other students uh, who may look up to the SRA. Um, so, yeah. Okay, next on the speaker's list is Al Young. Yeah, hi. Um, could I just do a point of information? I'm just wondering, is there currently a yearly, like uh, put in place like yearly dates of all the SRA meetings, like before the year begins? Yes, okay. um, all the SRA dates are available um, online when they are solidified. Usually the solidification happens in around June, July, and anyone can access it. Okay, um, yeah. Sorry. Did you still have a question? Yeah, I still do have a question. Um, okay. 
Yeah, thank you, Mani, for your presentation. I just wanted to ask about um, how feasible you think that your platform points are. So particularly, I saw that you um, wanted to try to incentivize constituent particip participation by, for example, providing gift cards or gifts, um, as well as the point of um, the Google form. So um, how you plan on being able to maintain that while a meeting is ongoing and ensuring that the meeting still runs efficiently um, because like the speaker does have like several things that they do have to manage like during the meeting. So um, yeah, sorry, I guess that's two little points, but yeah, that's um, So let me just like make this clear. So like your first point is regarding my, the implementation of my ideas and, my, and your second point is how I'm going to balance my Google form idea. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, so in terms of the first point, I think um, regarding the implementation of my ideas, like, uh, yeah, I think like um, in terms of accessibility for students, yeah, like I really, really do want to see an increase in um, observers at the meetings. I really want to see an increase in constituency presence at our meetings because like, again, we are the Student Representative Assembly and I think having students is a big part of that. Um, so while um, there might be indirect presence through like, you know, a uh, constituents asking the representatives to uh, uh, bring up questions or bring up ideas, bring up concerns at assemblies. I think it's also important to have actual physical students in those areas. Um, so yeah, that's like in terms of like, I think um, there are funds available um, in terms of like the MSU and I can probably like uh, fundraise or ask other people for those funds. Uh, but I, I think it is important to kind of incentivize people to actually show up. Um, I think like this is kind of a precursor to the General Assembly because like, again, uh, we have very, very low turnout for the General Assembly. And I think uh, as a speaker's job is to orchestrate that and to make sure it's a su successful event. Um, I think like this would be like a little bit of a precursor to that kind of event. So like increasing that presence by uh, incentivizing it, making sure that people actually attend, uh, creating those relationships between the people that want to attend. So they, you know, either are encouraged to run for election in the future or to just attend meetings as a general member. Um, I think that's very important. In terms of the second idea for the Google Forms, I think yeah, like you raise a very good point. I my job is primarily to my job is primarily to facilitate a uh, vigorous discussion, and I think that would be my main concern. But again, I think this Google Form basically serves as a means for introverted individuals to contribute to that debate. So while like yeah, like um, it might impede my ability at some points to like concentrate. So that's why I would only actually look at the Google Forms when there's like a transition or something like that. Uh, where I'm not actually actively moderating a debate. I think that's basically the best possible way to incorporate that idea. Okay, now we're going to be moving to Johnson. Hi, um, thank you very much for taking the time today. You have several uh, platform points, including videos, um, gift cards, things like that. Can you just elaborate on who you consulted on the feasibility of these ideas? Uh, could you repeat the question? Sorry, I was taking off my mic. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you have several uh, platform points, including things like videos or gift cards for incentivizing constituents to coming to meetings. Can you please elaborate on who you consulted on the feasibility of these ideas? Yeah, um, the video uh, the the video meeting minutes was actually not suggested by me at all. I think I mentioned it previously. A representative brought this up to me themselves. So I think that for sure, like they would probably be okay with doing that. But like again, as we've mentioned previously, all the candidates have. Uh, this is something like all the platform ideas that requires fine tuning, uh, further discussion with the other representatives because one representative might not be representative of the whole caucus of, or the whole assembly for sure. So I think like, yeah, like I'm sure like that was a great idea, I think from him. Um, but like, I think it's important to get other opinions and also like explore the feasibility of that option uh, 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 with other candidates. Um, and could you repeat the second part of your question? Um, I was just looking to know who you consulted on the feasibility of your platform ideas. Uh, yeah, and like I think in general, um, I basically uh, had a conversation with like as many representatives, like the current representatives as I can to kind of talk about this. I also talked to the previous speakers um, uh, for this position to see that like, oh, like, do you think this would be feasible? Do you think this is something that you would have implemented? So I've had discussions with other people regarding this. Okay, and that is the end of the individualized question period for Manib. Thank you so much. And now... We are going to be moving on to the next candidate, which is Jessica. Okay. Perfect. So if anyone has a question for Jessica, now would be the time. Sorry, I hear an echo on myself.
that would be okay. So, um, Figurito. Hello, um, I have a question from somebody from Facebook. Um, it says this year the MSU de uh, ratified two MSU clubs and, uh, as always, reviews the budgets for non MSU groups, specifically bylaw five groups. What role do you believe the speaker has in maintaining clear and timely communication with non MSU groups and clubs? Sorry, you're just muted. <laughs> do you mind just repeating the question? Sorry, it was a large. Yeah. I will not repeat the preamble. I'll just, I'll give you the actual question. Um, Thank you. What role do you believe the speaker has in maintaining clear and timely communication with non MSU groups and clubs? Um, so great question. I think that the speaker role has the speaker has a, a quite a large role in um, maintaining communication with um, non SRA members. Um, specifically pertaining to um, the CSSA um, de-ratification this year and um, other possible communication um, miscommunication instances that happen throughout the year. Um, I think as if elected to speaker, um, I really want to make sure that we're using every avenue of communication. Um, I'm also a really big person on, on like follow-ups and so I think definitely in the speaker role, trying to ensure um, that I am, again, using every avenue of communication, whether that be through email, whether that um, be through if they would rather communicate through Facebook Messenger um, or something to that extent. If we're not getting the responses, um, I definitely want to be sure to be following up in any capacity that they would um, that would be most beneficial for them and that they can get the information that would be necessary for the meetings or for um, anything that they're kind of inquiring about. Um, yeah, so that's just like a personal thing. Like I, I am very big on following up um, within like, you know, two or three days if I haven't heard anything, depending on the severity of the topic at hand. Um, and, you know, maybe email isn't too great for them. As I said, again, like following up over even maybe a Facebook message is um, easier for them to respond to, but just ensuring that there is a open communication and ensuring that they are aware that of who to come to. But also, um, I, I believe in asking for help when needed. Um, so in certain situations, if I am unsure on how to approach a specific situation in terms of communication, I would not um, be afraid to ask for help from like any one of the VPs um, or anyone of anyone who would be able to help me in those situations um, and to ensure that there is proper communication and proper information being circulated. Okay, we have a point of information from COSAC. Yeah, I'm just wondering if we have an exam at 1230, can we get another another member of our caucus to vote on our behalf for a candidate? Mm -hmm. No, there is no proxy voting. I apologize. OK, thank you. Not a problem. And we're now going to continue on with Samson. Uh, hi, uh, what was the biggest issue or problem you believe the speaker faced this year? And how would you go about solving or improving on it? Um, I think one of the biggest issues could have possibly been um, that communication aspect in at the time of the um, CSSA de-ratification. Um, I personally believe that Marianne did an incredible job as speaker this year, and she was part of the part of my inspiration of why I wanted to run um, because she helped foster such an incredible supportive environment for the SRA members and really was able to gauge the situations within the room. Um, but I definitely think that there there was like a bit of a hiccup in that in that one point in time um, with communication. And then sorry, there was just a, another part of your question at the end. Do you mind just repeating that? Sure. I was just asking like if there's any improvements you could see on for next year. Yeah, for sure. Um, so just again, like in, improvements in communication, um, ensuring that there are these avenues and these avenues are well known by constituents. Um, and I think I have a lot of ideas in terms of um, engaging with constituents more throughout the year so that they 
are aware of these avenues that they can go through in order to reach the speaker, in order to reach SRA members. Um, some of those include like constant conversation um, in surrounding GA, which is a big part of the speaker role of like event planning for General Assembly. Um, so I think just again, like engaging um, with constituents, not not being afraid to ask for help in in cases um, and ensuring that all avenues of communication are being utilized so that there is this open communication um, and that the proper information again is being circulated. OK, step focus. Hello. So I had a question about, um, I guess this was brought up earlier as well, but I'm just asking the feasibility. Um, so you have, have a lot of things in your platform about getting things to help progress the accessibility of our meetings and stuff. And I was just wondering if you could speak to the feasibility behind a lot of that. Yeah, for sure. So I'll just go like briefly um, with a few points of my platform. Um, I think like a, a more ambitious part of my platform is like the microphones. Um, and I have had consult consultations um, with the president elect Giancarlo and the current president, Josh. Um, and Giancarlo actually asked Alex a question for me um, about the feasibility of getting new microphones and live transcribing. Um, and there were the response that I got um, was that like there are um, current plans for looking into new mics and sound possibly for the upcoming year. Uh, so that's really exciting and that shows that there is a feasibility within that already. Um, and then in terms of the live transcribing, I have been trying to get in contact um, and kind of been in contact with uh, the learning technologies consultant at McMaster. And so that's just to, again, like gain feasibility of different softwares that we could use for live transcribing purposes for the meetings. Um, also in terms of general assembly, um, I think there is a really large feasibility with uh, my, the community roundtable idea um, to engage conversation with constituents um, through a lot of my consultation meetings with the two uh, kind of transitional presidents. Um, that has proven to be something that they both believe to be kind of, that I've gotten from, from them to be kind of feasible. Um, and also in, ooh, sorry. Um, in terms of feasibility of the promotional videos. Um, in speaking with uh, one of the SRA members, um, Dixit, who sat on the comms team this year, and I believe is on the comms team, the communication team um, this year, or this upcoming year, um, from my understanding, uh, he explained a lot of feasibility of um, the Instagram takeover, or Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook story takeovers. And then also a lot of the feasibility um, of having these uh, two to three minute monthly recap videos. And those would be more feasible than having um, my original idea of like weekly videos. Um, and then also just sorry, in terms of um, SRA like training, um, that platform point of mine in my consultation with Josh, um, he explained a lot of the feasibility to me and explained some issues that happened this year um, that the current VP admin had in terms of training. So I was able to see a lot of that feasibility and add a lot to my platform point through those consultations um, and see how I could improve my platform points if elected into speaker, into the speaker role to allow for them to happen um, and to like be put in place. Okay, and that is the end of our question period for Jessica. Thank you, Jessica, for questioning. Um, I'm not going to finish that sentence. And then last but not least is Rhea. So if, and if Rhea can get ready and set up. And also, if anyone would like to add themselves to the speakers list to ask questions for Rhea, now would be the time to do so. OK, we're going to start with staff OCOs. OK, so I strongly believe the General Assembly is a very important event. However, we have a generally low turnout every year. And um, after looking at your platform, it doesn't really include the General Assembly. So I'm just curious to see how you as a speaker could increase turnout and engagement so all students have a voice. 
Yeah, for sure. Definitely an important question. Um, it's something that obviously that uh, I wanted to make my platform as concise as possible. And just because it's not in the platform doesn't mean it's not a priority for me. Um, obviously, given the fact that General Assembly didn't run this year means that um, in the coming year when we're running it, we'll have will likely face even greater difficulties when it comes to engaging with constituents and ensuring that turnout is you know as high as we can possibly make it. Um, so it's obviously definitely something I would want to um, make a priority from the get-go um, at this, if I were to be elected as speaker. Um, and there were a couple of avenues through which I was hoping to do this, obviously through social media presence and through um, ensuring that SRA members have the appropriate communication material to do that promotion. Um, and, you know, and even perhaps having like meet and greet events prior to the start of General Assembly, just to sort of advertise, you know, what is General Assembly for, you know, in conjunction with SRA members. I think that all, those could all work together to sort of further encourage constituents to come out to General Assembly. But um, in terms of the planning aspect of it, I would obviously have to consult with the appropriate stakeholders, you know, VP admin, anyone else who would sort of be involved with planning with me um, to ensure, you know, sort of the feasibility of those ideas and, you know, whether or not they would sort of deem those to be effective. Um, so yeah, definitely just because I haven't included in my platform point doesn't mean it's something I didn't want to tackle, um, but it's obviously a very critical aspect of the speaker role and not something that um, I would not address moving forward. Egbayemi? Egbayemi? Adiola? Okay. Okay. Um, Egbayemi is having mic issues. I've paused the time. Um, Adiola, if you'd like to, you can ask your question in the chat, and then after I'll also vocalize it too for the people who are watching on the live, who will be watching the recording. And Rayo, just for continuity, just wait for me to finish saying the question before you answer if that's okay. Sounds Thank good. you. Okay, and the question is just wondering if you can give some detail as to your plans for SRA training, especially for this year online. Yeah, definitely. I definitely think that's a topical question and something that needs to be addressed moving forward, um, particularly given the uncertainty of the current situation. Um, we don't really know how long um, these this online platform thing is going to be happening for. So um, moving forward, if I were to be elected to speaker, it's definitely something I would account for um, and helping to plan for SRA trainings. So obviously in consulting with VP admin and um, planning out these SRA trainings, something I would want to ensure and something I felt was perhaps a little bit lacking in my own transition um, through the SRA um, is sort of the lack of the official um, transition, you know, ensuring that the old SRA members are actually transitioning the new SRA members into their roles. I think that's something I would hope to um, hold old SRA members accountable for moving forward next year. Um, just to ensure that that transition is as smooth as possible and people are sort of um, up to speed on the same issues. Um, I would also like to um, obviously make uh, training um, as transparent and accessible as possible and perhaps more interactive. Um, I think that um, obviously we're going to make do with this situation as we can and perhaps that involves you know setting up modules or powerpoints or online for individuals to sort of read through but obviously uh, personally I don't feel that's the most effective way to sort of um, especially at the beginning of your role, transition SRA members into, you know, what their role entails and um, particularly with uh, Robert's rules and parliamentary procedure. Um, again, it's a lot, there's a very steep learning curve between seeing these rules on paper and actually putting them into practice. And so something I would want to prioritize is perhaps collaborating with the incoming VP admin um, to make those uh, trainings more interactive, more collaborative, perhaps holding them in um, smaller sections, smaller groups of people, but also ensuring that at the end of the day that, um, these trainings are more consistent throughout the year. So April training, September training, and perhaps even a mid-year training if people deem that necessary. 
um, in addition to ensuring that SRA voices are sort of prioritized in that training. So, um, you know, maybe using a Google form or something and sort of asking SRA members, you know, what they want to see in those trainings and prioritizing that because we should be here to sort of improve the SRA experience for all SRA members um, and ensure that that transition is as smooth as possible. So, yeah, those are a couple of the ideas I've been thinking about in terms of improving training, but it's definitely a valid question to take, particularly given the circumstances we find ourselves in. Okay. Right, so Marianne's internet just dropped, but we're going to keep on rolling through this list. Um, so next is Zoe. Hi. Um, hey, Ria. I was just going to ask you, so on your platform, you also talked about holding SRA members accountable, like a lot of the other uh, candidates today. On the note of accountability, how do you think the speaker should also be held accountable for things like fulfilling your platform or fulfilling your tasks? And also whether you want to be held accountable by the SRAs, the BOD, by yourself, things like that. Yeah, definitely a valid question. I think that, um, I think I've sort of touched on it in a prior answer to this question, uh, but obviously the speaker role sort of extends beyond just facilitating meetings. And while at the end of the day, I have my own plan and process for what I hope to see implemented next year when it comes to, you know, the assembly and how the assembly is running and SRA members, I think it's a lot to hold SRA, ask SRA members to hold me accountable as well. Obviously that's something I would want to clarify. Like if you have any questions or concerns about, you know, my performance as the speaker, um, feel free to bring that up to me, perhaps even having some sort of an anonymous Google form um, to have individuals sort of voice their SRA members sort of give me feedback if they feel that's necessary um, throughout the year. Um, so obviously SRA accountability could be a really great aspect of that. Um, but like I said, sort of touching base with the individuals that I'm working with throughout the year, whether that's like VP admin or people on elections committee or internal governance committee, sort of holding me accountable to my responsibilities as speaker. Um, but also, yes, when it comes to implementing my platform points, um, I do think that uh, I, I'm able to hold myself accountable to those things, but having those checks and balances in place is really important. Um, and, you know, whether it's the administrative assistant who I'm working with closely um, or other individuals um, sort of within my circle um, who are holding me accountable to that, I definitely think it's an important aspect of the role to, you know, ensure that accountability is held on both SRA members' ends, but also my end. Okay. And that is the end of the individualized question period for all our candidates. I'd like to thank everyone also for accommodating me and my internet. Um, and now we're going to be moving on to the next part of the end, the last part of the elections, which is the closing, which is the closing um, re remarks. Sorry, lost my words there. So for the closing remarks, each candidate will have up to five minutes to say any of their closing remarks that we, they would like to say. In addition, this will be going by um, first name to last, by, sorry, this will be going by first name to last name again. So Ahmed, you're up first with your um, closing remarks. Hi, okay, I'm gonna um, keep this as short as possible because I know people have exams and other things to do. Um, for my closing remarks, I promise you three things. Uh, one, all ideas, whether it be from representative or student will be heard, regardless of your personality type, whether you're introverted or extroverted, both support for an idea and dissent will be encouraged as we cannot progress if not for vigorous, productive discussion. Two, you will be treated with respect and dignity and I will ensure that I create an environment where ridicule and disrespect is not, disrespect is not tolerated. In terms of helping the SRA in other ways, I will make sure that SRAs are aware that I will be a source of support and fight for you for your rights in face of anybody. Um, three, my absolute and honest dedication in ensuring everyone is engaged and energized making sure to put an emphasis on efficiency and not letting discussions circle around. We have a responsibility to the constituents to do a good job and making meetings productive and efficient is essential for that. 
Um, I hope that it is clear that I love the school, I adore the master community, and that it would be my honor to serve you as speaker for the upcoming year. Thank you. Okay, Herskovich. Okay, hello again. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for giving me the opportunity to speak in front of you today. Um, and thank you so much for your thoughtful and really insightful questions. Um, they were they were great. Um, ultimately, if elected, my biggest goal is to ensure that you all feel properly supported in your roles. Um, I really, really, really want to work on fostering an open and safe environment so that you all feel really comfortable in sharing your opinions um, and sharing them on an array of topics that could come up during the year. Uh, on top of that, I really want to be ensuring that you all have the knowledge to share so that you don't feel held back in the meetings if you maybe don't understand something um, in like Robert's rules or in a bylaw being discussed. So I really want to ensure that I'm working with the incoming VP admin in order to give you guys the tools and that knowledge through these personalized training sessions um, and possibly even like various mock meetings on General Assembly and even just mock meetings for uh, SRA in general. Um, to allow for you guys to be the best SRA members you personally want to be and 100% can be. Uh, I also really want to work with you all on constituent engagement, particularly pertaining to General Assembly and the biweekly SRA meetings. I want to focus on having ongoing conversations with students for the year about General Assembly and about the SRA um, through these community roundtable sessions, more informational promotions, bi-weekly SRA takeovers, and two to three minute um, monthly recap videos. I really want to ensure that we're all doing as much as possible to be transparent with our constituents, but also engaging with them in fun new ways. I also really want to work on SRA accessibility and work on improving the sound of the meetings and including live transcribing to ensure that the meetings are more accessible. Thank you again for letting me speak to you all today. Um, I hope all your exams and final papers go really, really well. Ultimately, you guys will choose who you feel most comfortable with. And regardless of the outcome, please feel free um, to come to me with any, que any questions or help with anything um, during your time. I'm extending myself to you all, so please feel free. Thank you again. Okay, and last but not least is Rhea. Yeah, um, I wanna thank everyone so much for giving me the opportunity to speak to you and sort of, you know, um, in translate you know talk about what my vision is for next year as the potential speaker um i think that there based on my own past experience as an sra member i think that there are a lot of smaller gaps that can be very easily filled by the speaker role um and i think that i've attempted to do that through my platform and i've tried to make my platform as feasible as possible in a way that will a ensure sra support you know ensuring that individuals voices are heard um, equitably within the room, um, whether it's during the meetings or outside of the meetings, um, through check-in meetings and through your plan feedback and through effective training, but also through ensuring um, transparency and accessibility with regard to our constituents. Um, the SRA as a whole, the Assembly as a whole, has a responsibility um, as the governing body of the MSU to sort of ensure that student voices are prioritized in whatever sense that may be. And I want to be able to support the incoming SRA to be able to do that, to be able to best be there for their constituents. And again, to bring that voice to them, to our meetings, to have productive, productive, fruitful and effective discussions. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, the speaker's role uh, within meetings is to make things run as efficiently as possible. Um, and again, there's an accountability aspect to that as well. I would definitely want to, individuals to hold me accountable to my to my platform points and to the things that I want to see moving forward in the year, but also um, on my end and to ensure that SRA members are held accountable to what they said they will get done during the year. Um, and that, again, extends to the constituents. So that's definitely something I would want to make a priority this year. Um, and I want to thank you all for giving me the opportunity again to be here. Um, and regardless of, again, of the outcome, I think that uh, there's a lot of really great candidates here and um, that next year will definitely be a wonderful year on the SRA. Um, irrespective of what happens. Um, and I want, again, like Jess, as a past SRA member, I want uh, to extend myself to you all. If any of you have any questions or concerns or want to discuss being on the SRA um, or just want to chat, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm always um, here as a resource to you all. Um, but yeah, thank you again. Good luck with everything. Okay, and that is the end of the elections. So the information which I will be giving to you coming forward is very important because it has to do with voting. So first, I'm going to explain how voting is. 
it's going to be a preferential ranked vote. So what will happen with the ballot that you have, you're able to rank all three candidates, number one, number two, and number three. If you rank more than, if you give more than three options, your ballot will be spoiled and your vote will not count. In addition, you will need to write your name on your ballot and initial it. If you do not write your name and initial your ballot, it will be spoiled. Other options you can do other than voting is you can also abstain. When you abstain, you are only able, that means you are not voting, so you cannot write. So if you say like first number one, this person, the number two, abstain, you're not able to do that. Your ballot will be spoiled. You can only, you can only if you abstain, you're not voting for anyone. Um, uh, yes, I can send an example of the ballot in the, ch in the chat. Um, I'll also be sending the ballot too soon. And then another thing to which um, I'll actually send you how the ballot will look like. The format will be messed up though, heads up. The ballot will look something like this. And then also another thing you can do is you can no confidence a particular candidate or all of the candidates if you'd like. And if a candidate has more than 50% no confidences, they will be eliminated from the they will be disqualified from the election. You are still a, you are able to rank people plus no confidence. The only thing you're not able to do in combining is to um, is to abstain for a vote. If you abstain for a vote, you are not voting. And so what will happen right now is because this is online, we will be doing an unofficial call of the roll to see who is here to see who gets a ballot so it is important for you if when you hear your name especially to either say that you're here in the chat or message or message the chat when you hear your name so we know that we can count your vote because we will be sending it to all SRE members including SRE members who are not in the meeting because we, because it is that's the way that we're able to do so in the email so it is important that when I say this attendance which will be happening very very soon you make sure that you say that you are here to make sure that we know that your vote counts. Um, we have a point of information by Anderson. Yes, Anderson, you can speak up. You have speaking rights as an AVP. Um, but the question, question is, um, um, as it's read. Oh. Yeah. yeah, OK, perfect. I was just um, so the question is to make sure that since it is ranked, can members make, like they don't have to include all three names if they don't choose to. I know it's so difficult virtually. Sorry. Yes. No, it's all good. Yes. So when you are able to rank, you're able to rank up to three, but you can rank you. But if you only like one person, you can just rank one person. If you like two, but you don't like the third, you can write two people. You're able to write one to three things. If you don't write, if you don't put anyone's name, you must put abstain. If you don't write anything and you send it back, it will your ballot will be spoiled. I'm just trying to emphasize this because I do not want people's ballots to be spoiled. OK, so I am just about to go and pull up the call of the roll. This call of the roll is important. Remember, I'm going to remind you again, make sure to either say that you are here or give up or give some sort of like message saying that you're here in the chat when you hear your name, because we want to make sure that if you're here, the people who are voting are here. So we're going to go with Aminiel, Daniel Aminiel. Here. Perfect. Um, Al Young, Christy. OK, Rihanna Bagastos. Here. Um, Saad Beg. Saad. Are you here? Last call, Saad. OK. Haley Birch. Here. Manpreet Chopra. Manpreet Chopra, OK. Sarfina Chui. Sarfina, last call, last call. OK. Sabrina Dayhab. Here. Uh, Jacob De Silva. Jacob De Silva, last Here. call for, okay. Gail Marie Del Callisto, okay. Denver Della Vadova, okay. Simran Desinda, here. Uh, at Adit Dixit, yeah. Okay. Adiola Agbayemi, Adiola. I know your messages aren't calling. Can you? Adiola, perfect. Sarah Figueroa. Okay, Damien Gold Goldlesky, Goldlesky. Okay, Shamar Hackett. Hello. 
Alex Johnson. Uh, Matthew Jones. Here. Jamie Kosak. Here. Danielle Madbet Lavina. I apologize. Uh, Josh Mirando. Amelia Messick. Here. Malik Nakua. Here. Hertik Patel. Here. Bethel Sampson. Here. Armin Saralasani. Here. Shelby Seymour. Here. Manjeet Singh. Here. Um, Maynard Smith. So okay. Adrian Stafikonos. Staff here. Panit Bind. Uh, here. Zota Stai. Here. Charlie Violin. Jacob Wang. Okay. I'm going to send the ballot. People who are absent have been noted, and you are in L. And if I do get an email from you, um, you won't be able to vote. If you're here and you're hearing this, please message me now. Okay, the ballot is. Please put in the chat if you received the ballot. Everyone should have just received the ballot. I just sent it. Okay, perfect. So make sure you email the ballot back and we will start to tally the Make sure to CC Daniela. Um, Violin, we have a point of information. Go ahead. Sorry, that was my point of information. Okay. Was to Perfect. CC Daniela? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I well, understand. Good. I'm on the same page as you. Okay. If you've received it, great. If you haven't received it, please message on the chat and we'll figure that out right now. Um, to the question of Al Young, yes, if you know confidence, you say no confidence, then you write the person's name. Point of information, uh, Marianne. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the answer to this, but just for everybody else, will everyone's ballot be posted online? Yes, your ballot will be posted online. Um, all all VP elections and speaker elections are open ballot. The rest of the elections which will be done are not open ballot. So so your your name will be associated with your ballot. Thank and you. Not a problem. Okay, for the people who, Uh, Denver, go ahead with your point of information. Um, full names are preferred. So please, if you can write the full name, please do. But we can, one, uh, one name is fine, but we prefer full name.
For the people who have not received a ballot, please email me at speaker at msu.mcmaster.ca. If you have not sent in your ballot, please let me know on the chat right now, please. This is your third last call for voting. If you have this is your third last call for voting. If you have not voted, please let me know. Yes, Singh, we have a point of information. Um, when you say about voting, are you talking about only the individuals who received a ballot, but or also the ones who did not initially? I mean everyone. If you have not received a ballot, if you have not um if you have not, um, what am I trying to say, received a ballot, you sh everyone should have now been sent a ballot as of now. So everybody, if you have not voted, please let me know. And yeah. also, you will not get a comfort. Um, let me see. If you sent the email, you should be able to, you should, I should have gotten it because right now, what am I trying to say? Because I just can't go through 29 emails and reply to every single person and I don't have, but that is an oversight and I will see if I can do automatic emails and automatic replies saying that I've sent for the next meeting. 
I still um, have not gotten a the ballot. You still have not gotten the ballot? Oh, okay. um, I can yeah. resend my email. So that's my email in case it was like incorrect in the registry. At this point, everyone should have been sent a ballot. I'm also assuming that everyone except for the one person who has messaged me recently about not getting a ballot has voted. If you have not voted, please let me know now because as soon as this person sends in the vote, the voting will be closed. Okay, the last ballot has been received. So what will happen is that me and Danielle will now leave this meeting and then count the, and count the ballots. We will return when the ballots have been counted. 
So sit tight and we might return at any time. So I please still ask that you just stay in the meeting just so that you're able to, just so that when we come back, you're still able to just, we are able to just quickly continue. Awesome.
unknown participant is now joining. Unknown participant is now exiting. Hello, and we are back. Thank you so much for waiting. We're just going to wait for everyone just to come back on the mics and everything. Hello. Do, 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 do. We're now just waiting for Daniela to join the meeting. Thank you again for your patience. Perfect. Um, are all candidates here? Are all um, speaker candidates here? Yep. Okay, yeah. Yep. And one yep. more. Perfect. Okay, so I would like to really read the results of the election. So from a 16 to 9 to 6 vote, I'd like to congratulate Rhea John Gruff being the new MSU speaker for 2020 and 2021. So thank you. Woo! This is usually when people would clap, so I'm just clapping for you so we don't get overhaul with the mics. Woo. Congratulations to everyone who ran and because um, it is something stressful and I'm very happy. I'd also like to note to the assembly that we did have three spoiled ballots. So um, keep in mind when you vote, make sure that you're voting exactly as the ballot says. We'll try to make sure the next ballots have a little bit more clarification to try to reduce the amount of spoilage that does occur. So, and that is our first election done. So we are one quarter of the way done. And for the for the speaker ballots, feel free to stay in um, feel free to stay in the meeting. Feel free to leave. And yeah, so that's where we are right now. So we are now. Uh, I'm just gonna let the the assembly just continue to congratulate everyone on the chat. Just take your time.
Okay. Sorry. So perfect. So unless we don't, unless we have any motions for recesses, we are then going to continue on to our next election. Okay. Uh, question. Yes. Can I motion for a recess? Yes, you can. Uh, can you be can you be more precise in your motion, please? Uh, you are right. Can I motion for? Uh, uh, let's do. Uh, I don't know. Let's do. Fifteen minutes. Okay. Do I have a seconder? Someone second, please. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Hacker, would you like to speak to it? Uh, yeah, we've been sitting here for a while, so give people opportunity to get up, get food, stretch, do whatever else. Okay, Dixit, would you like to speak to it? Uh, no. Do you have <laughs> any further discussion? Okay. I've put the motion on, moved by Hackett, seconded by Dixit, that we motion for a 15-minute recess. And all four, and just please vote in the chat. Perfect. Okay, and the motion passes. I will see all of you at 1.16 p.m. We will be doing call of the roll then, so there. So we will be checking attendance again. So see you at 1.16.